So welcome to the Magical Experiment. <clears throat> I am Neris, your host, and if you don't know who I am, it's okay. This is the first episode of my newest show. And here on the Magical Experiment, we're talking about Magic the Gathering. It's a passion of mine, it's something I really like, and that's the point of the show. So this show is about magic, and if you're looking for the Grand Experiment, well, it's on this channel, and it will be coming soon. Um, if you like what you see here in this episode, please like, comment, subscribe, anything you'd like to do like that would be great. <clears throat> so for this first episode, I thought that I would take this episode and we're going to talk about magic for this past year, for the year 2015, because 2015 was a strange year for magic. Um, we're going to talk about the release product from Wizards, so we're going to be talking about the sealed products, the sets. We are going to be talking about From the Vault Angels, and the reason we're not going to talk about it is because it's considered a specialty item. Um, same token, we're not going to talk about Magic Duels for iOS or Xbox One or anything like that. The reason is, is because it's a video game, and here in the Magical Experiment, we're talking about Magic, okay? So, all that being said, let's talk about the state of Magic for 2015. Let me set the scene for you. We had a dreadful um, Kanza Tarkir block released in October of 2014, and it was it was okay. It was whatever. Um, it had intriguing value with stuff like Siege Rhino and stuff like that, but it didn't really synergize well with the previous set, which was all about monocolor devotion and Theros. So. Um, as a whole, it was kind of underwhelming, all right? And then we had Commander 2014, which, kind of similar to Theros, had monocolor commanders. Actually, Planeswalker commanders, plus a couple of other alternates. But that was what we ended up with in 2014. So, here's where the state of magic was for the year of 2015. The first set was Fate Reforged. The time-traveling follow-up to Khan's Tark here finds Sarkin Bull traveling back over a thousand years to search for an ancient voice that's calling to him. And this voice turns out to be the voice of a dragon planeswalker, Ugin. Sarkin changes Ugin's fate at the hands of Nicole Bolas. Originally, Ugin had died. Um, and Ugin's presence being gone from Tark here allowed the cons to be able to destroy all the dragons, thus, the, thus that Tarkir is left as it is. So, since he has saved Dugan's life, Tarkir is now changed. This set, um, it's given us the second color was Planeswalker. The first one was Karn. It's Karn liberated back in New Phyrexium. So, we now have Ugin's Spirit Dragon. And Ugin has um, storyline length. He's made a couple of appearances. He recently made an appearance in um, the end of the Oath of the Gatewatch storyline where he talks to Jace, but we'll get to that later. Um, so it gave us Ugin the Spirit Dragon. It gave us a, an amazing three drop in Monastery Mentor. And trust me, if you know Monastery Mentor, you know what I'm talking about. It's awesome. And we also had a fantastic common, which is known as Gurmag Angler. And Gurmag Angler is very, very popular in Delve decks, alongside with, um, <clears throat> alongside with the cons, the, the, the past cons, in Alicia, Tassiger, um, Anathenza, actually I'm wrong about Anathenza, <laughs> um, Dagmar, Dagmar, you get the idea. So, Fate Reforged breathed a lot of life into Tarkir, which was kind of necessary because, you know, Khan's Tarkir was very underwhelming. The next, the next item that was released was Elspeth vs. Kira, and it was the first dual deck of the year. It was the final one, as of so far, to feature um, two departing planeswalkers. You know, what you Wizards used to do is, every year, they would release... <clears throat> a dual deck that was a preview of an upcoming set, 
which um, in 2014, it was speed versus cunning. And then in 2015, it was <clears throat> the final set with Planeswalkers was Elspeth versus Kiora. And it featured um, the, the two departing Planeswalkers and Elspeth, Sun's Champion, and Kiora, the Crashing Wave. <clears throat> At the time, it was considered, I mean, it was it's considered okay. The um, as it was previously stated on Tolarian Community College, um, if you were to buy the pieces separately for um, for Elspeth or Sakura, they provided up pretty much to about a $50 value, which isn't bad. So um, if you were to be asked the question, is it worth it, if someone should invest in it, it's kind of a matter of taste. Does it appeal to you? That's not a question I can answer. That's only a question you can answer. And that takes us to the final set in the Cons of Tarkir block, and the final of the three block paradigm in Dragons of Tarkir. And um, in Dragons, Sarkin returns to his own time, and the world has changed. Ugin's alive. And also alive is Sarkin's friend Narset, and um, storyline point here was missing. When Sarkin went back in time, Narset um, Narset defended Sarkin while he was making the time jump from a uh, Zergo Helm Smasher who came in and was trying to kill him. And Narset stepped in the way and she was slain. So, returning to this time, he finds out that not only is Narset alive, she's actually a planeswalker. So, she... <clears throat> So, with her being alive, it gives, you know, possibilities there, but um, the really, the big thing about Dragons of Tarkir was that there were more dragons in this set than ever. I mean, ever. Um, it was very, it was very focused on dragons. There were the five dragon lords, Dragon Lord Dramoga, Atarka, uh, Silumgar, Kolagon and Ojitai. And it also it changed the natures of the clans. The clans originally in cons were three color based, now they're two. So um, we could talk about the Dragon Lords, but I mean honestly if you play magic you know about the Dragon Lords. I mean the the big card from this set, at least in my eyes, that really made an impact was the Green Instant Collected Company, which um, it, it's cross formats. Um, it actually took a dip for a little bit, but it's recently come back up in price um, thanks to modern thanks to modern Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch. So it's a good card. Um, if you have not invested money into it and you play green, play green, wing, or, or really any wing, you splash green into it, it's a, it's a worthy card. Trust me, it, it's worth your time. So, <clears throat> where did that leave Magic? The next set to be released was called Modern Masters 2015, and it was strictly a reprint set. It had no impact on Standard, it was all about Modern, which, it was understandable, but it, okay, it gained Wizards a lot of ire. First of all, they were $10 boosters which um, the previous Modern Master set, which I believe was 2013? I, I may be wrong on that. Either way. In, 20, <clears throat> in 2015, we had Modern Masters 2015. It was a $10 booster, which was considered a bit much. And then on top of that, um, there was, like, there was no curve with it. A lot of the stuff that was printed in Modern Masters had a had a decent curve, so you know your most expensive card and your least expensive card, you know, I mean, you were getting some value out of it. You may not necessarily get you know a fifty, sixty dollar rare, but you were going to walk away with something valuable. But Modern Masters fifteen, that was not the case. As a matter of fact, the most expensive card, Tarmogoyf, and then you had stuff like Etch Monstrosity, which was only coming up to thirty cents. It was just a horrible horrible curve in terms of price so you know to me that's unacceptable you know to pay ten dollars and get a 50 cent rare and some somewhat offset 
commons and uncommons. I mean, there was no synergy with it. There was nothing that said, ooh, all this works together. No, it was very, very random, and it didn't make a lot of sense. So, <clears throat> in my opinion, paying $10 for this booster was unacceptable, and we're going to see something like this again this year, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Which leads us to the next official set that was um, it's standard legal, still a standard legal, and that is Magic Origins. It was billed as the final core set, but what it really did was it allowed Magic's storyline to reset a little bit. It gave us background and backstories to the Planeswalkers, so we saw um, the stories behind Gideon, behind Jace, Nyssa, Chandra, Liliana, <clears throat> and I mean it was okay. Um, there were a few cards from Magic Origins that were unique. I mean, particularly um, uh, Shaman of the Pack for Golgari Elves. Excellent card. Works great with Collected Company too. So um, there was an awesome artifact creature. It was Double X and Hangerback Walker, which. If you don't, if you don't know about Hangerback Walker, don't know it's an awesome card. Trust me, it is, and um, it's worth your time, worth looking into. Um, and then also we have the most, one of the most broken planeswalkers in history, and lo and behold, Big Daddy Jace. You can't see him up there, but he's up there in the corner. <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll tilt my, I'll well, take my hand up here so you can get a little look at him. You can see those are all my uh, little figures up there. Sorry about that. Sorry, right, first episode. Gotta get the kinks out. <laughs> okay. All right. So, <clears throat> Jace Friends Prodigy, or as he's been called, Jace the Snapcaster Mage, and that's what he is. I mean, his um, when he's a creature, his abilities. Just like you dump cards into the yard, and then once you have a, have a number of cards, you can start, you can start, um, <clears throat> you can flip him, and then you have a Snapcaster Mage's ability, depending on how you use it. So, it's pretty broken. Still one of the most expensive cards in Magic the Gathering. Sorry, I just had to move that there a little bit. <laughs> Still a little messed up. There we go, that's better. So, <clears throat> that's what we have so far with Magic Origins, and that's where we ended with that. So, moving on to Zenikar versus Eldrazi. That's the, that was the preview dual deck for Battle for Zenikar. Now, some people have stated that Zenikar versus Eldrazi was really a waste of a dual deck. However, some recent, some recent stuff, especially a Pro Tour Earth of Gatewatch, have proven this otherwise um <clears throat> you had you know your, your two rares in it where avenger of zendikar and oblivion tower which i'm telling you right now oblivion tower actually more than pulled its weight it brought down the price of oblivion tower who is a mainstay in a lot of in a lot of eldrazi decks including modern eldrazi <clears throat> the other thing is it also came with a um, Eldrazi Temple. And Eldrazi Temples right now are really popular, particularly with the, um, <clears throat> with the Agro Eldrazi crowd. So, you know, if you were to buy, go out and buy the pieces from that set currently right now, you're probably going to be running about 60 to $70, dollars, or at least that's what I come to understand from Tulane Community College. So, <clears throat> with that, we move to the final set of 2015, the final official set in Battle for Zendikar, and it was heavily anticipated, and it's an epic return to the besieged world of Zendikar, who's fighting against the Eldrazi, um, particularly the Titan Ulamog, and it sees the story return back to Zendikar. Gideon has recruited Jace, and they're trying to figure out how do you solve the problem of the Eldrazi, and... <clears throat> There are other planeswalkers. There was um, there were uh, Kitty and er, Kitty, Kira, the Crashing Wave, who actually appears as Kira, Master of Waves, now newly empowered with um, Thassa's Bidens from Theros. 
and <clears throat> um, there were great ally creatures, including the powerful ally Drana, Liverary Malakir, and we had a new planeswalker in we had a new planeswalker in Gideon, ally of Zendikar, who he was commanding a pretty heavy price tag for a while. He's gone down a little bit, but he's still a really impressive, really impressive version of himself. This is probably the best version of Gideon that I've seen thus far. So, with this, um, <clears throat> Battle for Zendikar, as similar to the original Zendikar, original Zendikar had hidden cards, gems from other sets, and what they did was they took this idea and they made what are called the Expedition Lands. You can find Expedition Lands in <clears throat> random boosters of Battle for Zendikar. They are foil premium boosters of classic lands, such as Shock Lands and fetch lands, and even including the battle lands from, um, <clears throat> from Battle for Zendikar. So, it's, it's, it, 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 it was a good set. It ultimately is just as similar as, um, just as similar as, uh, Battle for Zendikar does not really, uh, just as, as cons didn't synergize with Theros, Battle for Zendikar doesn't really play well with, um, doesn't really play well with Tarkir block. Because right now, if you you know, I mean, the recent Pro Tour, um, you saw Jeskai Black, which was making a big splash. So the bottom line is, is that, I mean, it, it, it's a good set. It's a good set. It was, a lot of people felt it was very underpowered, which is understandable. Storyline-wise, it was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> Magic's found their way to continue their stories through online videos. And you can find some of them, um, you know, well, not online videos, but online stories, which you can find on their website. But bottom line is, is that people will wonder, um, people wonder if it's worth buying into Battle for Zendikar, and I'd say, I'd say it is. I mean, especially those with Eldravi, with Eldravi decks right now, Endless One, 50 Cent Rare when it released, it's $4 now, trust me. Which brings us to the final, the final release from 2015, and that was the Commander 2015 set, and it was, it was different than Commander 2014 in that Commander 2014 was focused on monocolored commanders and they were also planeswalkers. Commander 2015 had a focus on experience counters, and it was with all their commanders. He had Azuri, who was a Simic commander, who he would move counters, experience counters that he gains. He would move plus one, plus one counters to other creatures. He had Daxos, an Orzhov commander, who produces enchantment tokens. Kalem, who <clears throat> he's a Boros commander, who gets stronger with every experience counter that you that you give him from all the strong creatures you cast. Mazarek, who is a Bulgari commander, who cares about when your creatures go to the grave, and then Nizix, who cares about your instants and sorceries. It's all in all pretty good. Perhaps a bit overpriced at the time of release, well, but they're almost always all overpriced. You should start seeing their price start to drop soon. I would say by Christmas of this year, you should see them for about $20. So, that's where we left off in 2015. It wasn't a bad year in terms of magic. It was just kind of hit and miss sometimes. I would say for excitement's sake, there was a lot going, especially for Battle for Zendikar at first, and then it just kind of petered out because of how stuff performed. And then we had, of course, the recent um, Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch, which that kind of changed things. So let's talk about this year so far. Let's talk about 2016. Let's talk about what has been what has already released and what is and what's still to come. So the first was Oath of the Gatewatch, and the final set in the Battle for Zendikar block featured the return of the Eldrazi Titan Kozilek. It redefined colorless and put a lot more focus on team play. I mean this actually was a really interesting, really kind of round groundbreaking set if you think about it. Um <clears throat> With the redefinition of colorless, what they did was 
they redefined how colorless creatures may be played. Because what it was before was colorless was considered mana that was appearing as numbers. And it's now we now refer to that mana as generic mana, meaning you pay for it with anything. But colorless is kind of treated like a color. And it's proven with the Titan, Ula, um, not Ulama, Kozilek. With Kozilek, you have to pay two colorless and eight generic mana to play him. And they also defined <clears throat> what generates colorless mana. And they did multiple erratas. And you can actually see them all in the gatherer. That tells you, you know, like for instance, Soul Ring. You can play Kozilek by tapping Soul Ring. And it'll give you two colorless mana in addition to whatever else you're needing. So, you can do that. Now, that being said, that being said, you know, they couldn't go and reprint every card they did. So they just did the giant errata. There, <clears throat> there was also for this, um, I, I speculated when they were getting ready to release it that it wasn't going to change the casting cost of stuff. So, like for instance, um, <clears throat> it wasn't going to change how Soul Ring was to be cast or anything like that. All it did was it changed going forward. You're going to start seeing the basic land wastes. You're going to start seeing things that generate colorless mana. When they do that, they're going to generate it with colorless mana symbols. The first new mana symbol ever. Well, the first new mana symbol since New Phyrexia. Sorry about that. I'm only human. <clears throat> it also, the set really revolutionized modern when the aftermath of the Splinter Twin Summer Bloom bannings with the potential of turn two kills with Eldrazi Mimic. Bottom line is, is that it was really, really a powerful set. Really powerful and changes. And then the most recent set release is the dual deck Bless vs. Cursed. Now, Bless vs. Curse is a preview of Shadows over Innistrad. We return to the besieged land of Innistrad, and it contains a lot of Innistrad block reprints. Um, and some of them are pretty good, some of them are kind of, kind of meh. It contains six new cards from the upcoming block Shadows over Innistrad, and it also had a, um, a pretty pretty good reprint of Geist the Saint Trap, who Geist was already kind of on the way down, but with the new reprint, it's it's about, the, about in the $6 range. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say, though, that Geist has not been confirmed for Shadows of Innistrad. I really doubt that that happens. Kind of in the same way that Avenger of Zendikar was not reprinted in Battle for Zendikar. Which that brings us to the next set, which will come out in April, and that is Shadows over Innistrad. Now, something has happened to Innistrad. Somehow, Avacyn's power is lessened, and the darkness that once threatened to consume the plane that Avacyn's power held at bay once again is returning so sharply. There's a lot of speculation, a lot of theories about this. Some people think it's Emrakul. I really, really, really doubt you're going to see Eldrazi again after seeing them so recently. So, <clears throat> I think that the story is more tied to the fact that the Gatewatch, Jace, Gideon, Nyssa, Chandra, they're journeying to Innistrad and they're looking for Soren Markov. I think that that's the linchpin of the story right there. Soren Markov was one of the three original planeswalkers who helped contain the Eldrazi on Zendikar. And um, there was recently a story with Soren Markov speaking to Ugin, and he didn't return to Zendikar to deal with the Eldrazi when they had been released and, or when they were rampaging. So you have to kind of wonder what's going on with Soren. And even Jace, at the end of Oath of Gatewatch's story, he's wanting to know from Nyssa about Soren Markov. So... That's where I think is the linchpin for it. Um, why didn't Soren appear on Zendikar? What happened to Nahiri the Lithomancer? Nahiri, Soren was um, Soren was allied with her and Ugin, sealing away the Planeswalkers. Nahiri was the one who created the Hedron Network. So uh, hopefully these questions can be answered in Shadows, and we'll find out soon. 
And then the next set to follow Shadows of Innistrad is Eldritch Moon. And it's a small set, it's similar to how Oath of the Gatewatch was a small set to follow up from Battle for Zendikar. There's nothing that's known about the set recently. Nothing has been known about it, with the, the only exception is an image that features the Planeswalker Liliana Vez. So it's safe to say that Liliana will be making an appearance in Eldritch Moon, and <clears throat> it kind of makes sense. There's a lot of ties between Liliana and Innistrad, I and mean, after all, where she went and fought with Gristlebrand, so you have to wonder why she is back on Innistrad. Here we go. Following that, there are two interesting sets that, that follow. They're not official sets. They are, re well, one is a confirmed reprint set. The other one, the other one is more of a mystery, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But the first set is a reprint set called Eternal Masters. So Eternal Masters is essentially take the same idea from Modern Masters but instead apply it to Legacy, Vintage, Commander cards. That's what we're going to be seeing in Eternal Masters. Um, it, once again, it had command the price tag of $10. Now, I said that Modern Masters 15 was ridiculous for having a price tag of $10, and I stand by that. But Eternal Masters having a price tag of $10, it depends on what they print. The biggest problem with Modern Masters 2015 was the fact that you had your top card, which was $200 Tarmogoyf, versus your bulk 30, 50 cent rares. And that to me was ridiculous. Now, if there was like a balance between them, if there were like two to three dollar rares, it might be a bit more justifiable. You know, people are going to buy the set to try to get Force of Will. It's going to happen. Anyone who tells you otherwise is crazy. But, you know, if, if we're going to pay $10 for something, make it at least somewhat worth the while, you know? I mean, there, we're going to see some interesting stuff coming in it. So let's just, let, let's hope for the best. And then the next one was a bit of Tom Foolery on Wizard's part. With Conspiracy Take the Crown. Um, in case you don't know, a couple of years ago there was a set called Conspiracy. It was a draft set. The focus of the set were, was around um, specific draft cards that would appear in your packs and they could impact how your draft, in, how your draft went. Um, <clears throat> the title changed. It changed twice. It was first called The Reign of Brago and um, so everyone assumed that Brago King Eternal from the first Conspiracy set would be making a reappearance. And then, like, a day or two later, they changed it and said that that um, Brago was dead and that we weren't going to be seeing Brago in the second Conspiracy set. And so they called it, and so they called it, um, The Empty Throne. And then they said, take, they, it's called Take the Crown. And so now, the only thing we know from it is Marchesa the Black Rose is the new ruler of Fiora, and she is dealing with new threats that are, are popping up. Now, we know that the special conspiracy cards will be back, and we know that the Will of the Council ability will be also be coming back too, but other than that, we don't really know anything. I would expect a lot of reprints that you don't see in Eternal Masters, but it also has a $4 price tag, and that's pretty standard. So, you know, I would say what you don't see in Eternal Masters, you'll probably see in Conspiracy. Probably some of the more lesser stuff you'll see in Conspiracy. That's my theory. So, moving on. Um, the other, other than Conspiracy, we know that there is going to be a Summer Duel deck, which will introduce the next, that's the expectation. And then the Fall set, which we know is codenamed Lock. There's just no information at this time. I mean, for all we know, it could be something, could be something unique, but that's what we're looking at. So, I'd say that, you know, 
not knowing about it right now is fine, and hopefully we get some really interesting stuff. That's, that's my hope for. And then the final thing that we know will be coming this year will be Commander 2016. It'll be... Um, I'm hoping that as Commander 15 was all about enemy colors and featuring the experience colors, I kind of hope they go back and revisit that with Commander 16 with the allied colors, Celestia, Azorius, Demir, Gruul, Rakdos. And I hope it follows the same paradigm. It may not, but I hope it, uh, I hope it kind of completes the cycle, because they started to cycle with this, and hopefully they complete it. So, there you have it. That's a brief look back at the State of Magic in 2015, and for what has already released and will be releasing later this year. Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? That's okay. Let's talk about it. Um, put your put your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and we'll talk about it. Um, there there is no such thing as bad discussion. Let's just let's have an open and honest discussion about it. I'd love to hear what you, hear what you think. Um, I am collecting questions for a Q and A video that I'm going to film later on this year. So if you would like to add a question that would be part of the Q and A. Please do so in the comments below, and I would love to be able to answer your questions in there. If you enjoyed my video, please remember to like or subscribe to my channel. It's very much appreciated. Now, if you want more magic content, you can always check out The Studious Professor and The Always Outrageous Wedge at Tolarian Community College and The Mana Source, respectively. I provided their links below so that you can find them. And while you can purchase your sealed boosters of magic at Target or Walmart, you can also pick them up comparably at your local game store. Along with most, if not all, the singles you're searching for, please, please support your local game store. They support you. Also, if you like trading magic, but you don't always get out to the local game store to do so, you can always set up a free Puka Trade account and trade cards with anyone in the world. My next video, I will be talking about the benefits of Puka Trade. But for now, if you have not signed up for Puka Trade and you're interested in doing so, the link is provided below. Until next time, thank you for watching. I am Nerisus. Thank you, good luck, and high five. Mm -hmm.